Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back there, daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask you guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely, and of course, I always do greatly appreciate it. So obviously, it doesn't you know take a rocket scientist to know that I am still sick. My voice sounds like you know garbage, but hey it is what it is today i do want to address the incredible you know h bar price action i mean how are you guys feeling i mean we're basically rich at this point but no seriously um h bar is down about nine percent um you know i basically told you guys yesterday in my market update video to watch for some lows being tested now uh we're going to be addressing this um we're going to be talking about it as well uh, so first off, I do want to quickly just reiterate what I said in yesterday's video. So um, this was uploaded when HBAR was sitting at around like almost 23 cents exact. It was 22.9. Uh, we were starting to break down. And uh, here we are right now on the current price action, uh, currently sitting at about 21. Um, but listen closely to what I said yesterday. Also, again, my voice sounds like it sounds terrible in this video as well. So just, you know, bear with me. But listen closely right on that 50-day EMA you know if we don't have a significant bounce here we are testing some major lows so you know it, it, we could either do two things here okay and, and I'll show you this because this is very similar to other altcoins too so we either have this strong bounce off of the support zone to test resistance all right we'll, we'll test this resistance one last time before having a little bit of a higher low maybe somewhere within the 10-day EMA at about like no, roughly maybe like 23.8 right so it's like at around this range here all right before having that significant breakout event above this to test this resistance point up here at this fib level again it will be a quick test we'll come down probably range around this range here on again that 200 day ema uh before ultimately breaking out above this to test new you know somewhere within this like fib level but new support now that's one structure Okay, or we could have this point where we get that triple tap bottom, similar structure to Bitcoin, right? Triple tap bottom, and then we have this nice break up above, you know, this major, again, it's like a major almost breakout event uh, where we do test that resistance, get a solid rejection off, test the bottom that we're at basically right now, and then we finally get that breakout event to the top fib level followed by uh, another little correction you know support breaking or, or uh, support testing before eventually breaking out of that resistance this is two ways that this could play um of uh, again what which one do you think looks more likely right now I, I i would say definitely the breakdown event so i'm not taking any altcoin positions just yet and I, and I did say, you know, like when we are talking about that, you know, which one are we really kind of waiting for? It was this bottom structure being printed out. Now, obviously, since yesterday's video is currently at around like almost 23 cents, uh, we are down significantly. I mean, I'm, it, it's not like the idea that like I'm trying to sit here and say like that I called this. No, I'm just saying like, you know, when we are talking about this 8% dropping point, um, we could most likely come down, you know, lower. I'm not saying, hey, don't go buy this right now or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, where is our support? Like, we did not, we're not even ranging on any support right now for a significant drop. Uh, so I would say our next major low point um, would have to be uh, at least around this, you know, range down here at about like almost 20 cents exact. So I would, you know, just kind of, uh, if you're trying to buy H bar right now just because we are in the red, um, do not just FOMO in just because we are in the red. Like Bitcoin, in my opinion, can come down to about 43 to 42K. Uh, I said this in the Discord yesterday. I actually uh, made a little bit of a tweet about this, but I've talked about it in my daily uploads as well. Um, but when we are talking about HBAR, you know, I'm just saying, brace for impact, guys. So, you know, just make sure, you know, you are aware of the current structure of this market. And it's not just HBAR. Like, trust me, HBAR is not the only asset down. I mean, even Solana is down 9% on the 24-hour span. You know, we're still seeing some green across the board on some altcoins. Um, but we are still seeing major drops 
uh, throughout the entire market. So just you know, kind of look at the overall picture here. It's not just HBAR. HBAR is not the only one that's having a rough day. Now, I do want to talk to you guys about some ha things happening within the stablecoin area. Uh, so we did see this from Crypto Observer talking about the ANZ, and I'm hoping that I'm saying that right, but Bank, founded in 1835, is a top four bank in you know Australia. Uh, it operates in 34 markets across the U.S., Europe, Australia, NZ, uh, or New Zealand, Asia, Pacific, and the Middle East. It has a total assets well exceeding a trillion dollars. And of course, the stablecoin, you know, that they're talking about, uh, they're saying that it equals Hedera. Um, again, I don't think that we have a clear, you know, analysis on this, but listen closely to what they are saying here. It is pretty interesting. Structure, you know, the yeah. stable coins actually represent the rails on, onto which you can build use cases. And then that conversation around um, sustainability, yeah. around um, ESG, which wasn't mentioned, but in my mind, sustainability and ESG are two sides of the same coin. Yeah. And as you know, I'm something I'm particularly passionate about. But um, ANZ has a, a strong sustainability focus as well yes. on behalf of your, your customers. Yes. Are you blending that into your projects? Is there anything you want to talk about on that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we... <laughs> Yeah, we have a very well articulated sustainability strategy and, um, you know, we want to be a leader in that space. And we've made some announcements recently around pollination and those sorts of investments that we've made. So we're very serious about that. But the, 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 the network of choice at the moment is, uh, is, is both expensive uh, and arguably, I mean, we can debate this, so I understand we don't want to go enter into the debate, but rather, you know, the, the allegation or even the, the perception of, um, you know, wastage or unsustainable practices around a, what is, con what is conceived as a contemporary new form of uh, digital asset transactions is not really consistent. We become very interested in the Hedera network, uh, and we have a, for a variety of reasons, we've deployed a, a coin on, on testnet. Um, and the reason is that uh, when, you, when we make comparisons, uh, across a range of the available networks. And, we, you know, we're pretty chain agnostic, but when, it, when we're trying to fall in line with our principles around sustainability, um, the Hedera network is very, very defensible in terms of the consumption of energy for, to arrive at consensus. And, of course, the cost is extraordinarily much <laughs> lower uh, by a factor of about 1,000 in, in, in a recent transaction we did, um, just to prove a point, right? Um, so it's very favourable from a... Uh, a set of use cases that require high throughput and scalability. Uh, and we believe that in the future, stable coins will be so commonplace that that will be a fundamental requirement. Um, there's plenty more. And of course, you hear them talking about Hedera. I mean, overall, they are talking about not only sustainability, but scalability. They're talking about the cost. I mean, everything that goes hand in hand, you know, with the idea on why Hedera definitely will be the chosen one. And also, I mean, in terms of stablecoins, I mean, we're seeing stablecoins being adopted at a very, very massive rate right now. Uh, we do see, you know, PwC, more than 80% of central banks are considering launching a CBDC. You know, they could be, like, these are essentially stablecoins, right? These CBDCs are going to be the stablecoins of tomorrow, um, we do see stablecoins offer many of the same benefits as CBDCs, but without the surveillance that comes with a government-issued currency. The difference here is the idea on we don't technically need to have a CBDC if they are issuing a stablecoin on a private ledger. So let me let me talk about that real quick. So when we talk about CBDCs, the difference between a CBDC and a stablecoin is just the idea of you know, a central bank being able to control their digital coin, if you will. Now, if we are talking about a stable coin, a stable coin doesn't really have that control over it. Uh, so much as like, you know, if a central bank was controlling, you know, fiat cash, for an example, right? Like the Fed can print more fiat if they wanted to. Um, of course, when we talk about stable coins and CBDCs, you know, I, I look at the idea on like, they could just simply issue a stablecoin on a private ledger so that, you know, again, central banks have full control over it. And of course, it's fully transparent, traceable, um, and they still get the same exact benefits of a CBDC. Now, again, when we are talking about CBDCs and we're talking about stablecoins, I just expect that both of these are most likely going to be, 
you know, issued in terms of a government, you know, centralized area. I think that when we are talking about currency and we're talking about digital currency, you know, the future is definitely going to be, you know, with stable coins and CBDCs involved. Um, I think that right now when we are talking about the stable coin market, it is extremely massive. It's far too big to ignore. Um, there's a lot of benefits to a lot of things within this. So first off, I do think that stable coins are very good for the retail market. And when we are talking about wholesale CBCs, as they are mentioning here, you know, wholesale CBCs have the potential to streamline security token post-trade operations through atomic delivery versus payment and increase the market efficiency for several asset classes. And uh, when we are talking about wholesale, I'm fine with wholesale CBDCs. Just to reiterate exactly what I said the other day, talking about CBDCs. So you have retail and you have wholesale CBDCs. Retail CBDCs are basically ones that me and you would utilize on a day-to-day -day basis, tr you know, extremely traceable, trackable, um, and of course, uh, central banks do control it. Wholesale CBDCs are for, you know, financial institutions. Uh, this would be for security, you know, utilization um, in terms of security token trade and stuff like that, as they are mentioning here. It's more so for banks and institutional players. Now, when we talk about this, I'm fine with a stablecoin uh, sort of market for retail and a wholesale CBDC market for financial institutions and banks. Also, while we are looking at this, we do see congressional action on stablecoins could come as soon as this month. Now, this was the last month. This was March 8th, 2022. Um, we are seeing more and more meetings regarding digital assets. I just talked about this in my video from earlier today. Uh, we do see the Treasury talking about digital assets and you know regulations regarding them and stuff like that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you know comes of that. Um, but we do see efforts are underway in the House and the Senate to regulate stablecoin issuers and oversee reserves. Now, we've been seeing a lot of updates within this. Yesterday, I just reported on um, it was BNY Mellon actually backing the reserves of USDC. And when we are talking about things like that, you know, happening, you know, that's something pretty exciting to, you know, really celebrate. I mean, think about that. These are massive hedge funds, companies. Uh, you know, institutional investors, banks and stuff that are moving in on stable coins, moving in on crypto. It really kind of prints the picture on where we are headed. Um, again, when we are talking about even, you know, when we talk about Hedera, right? So like we talk about Hedera every day. I do a daily upload of Hedera every single day. It's not because I think that Hedera is going to a million dollars per token or anything like that, right? Like I'm not saying like HBAR is going to go off tomorrow. It's going to go to the moon. Um, I think that, realistically speaking, the long-term aspect on, you know, HBAR, even right now, right? Like, I know that this market looks rough. Um, as long as we kind of hold this FIB level, we're pretty good. Um, but, you know, even going off of, you know, the current structure of this market, like, I've always said, like, even going off of these bottom FIBs going, you know, back to the summertime. So, actually kind of look at this real quick. Um, so I kind of want to show you guys the the broader view here on those highs that could be targeted. So I've always said, you know, that like the three to six dollar range for you know H bar is still in play. Here you guys have those fib outreaches above the four six one eight. Just so you guys know, on our last run, uh, we had ended up somewhere within this range um, above the four six one eight. So we could miss the three dollar target a little bit. It could be like more like two to five dollars. Um, I still believe that in terms of FOMO staking and stuff like that that are launching on Hedera, it could definitely push the price upward. And this is just for this, you know, bull run. Um on the you know vast view here, you know, is a ten dollar, a twenty dollar, even up to fifty dollars per H bar you know, impossible in the future. Absolutely not. I mean, honestly, when we are looking at some of these assets in this space, we always talk about, you know, H bar, right? We talk about old coins a lot. Um, but let's actually talk about, you know, for example, the top two. You know, we are in a market where, you know, it's centered around Bitcoin and Ethereum. We hear these two being talked about on a day to day basis. But I want you guys to understand the efficiencies behind Hedera compared to the efficiencies behind Ethereum and Bitcoin. I mean, you got a list of pros and cons here. Um, I'm pretty sure, 
I don't know what network um, ANZ is actually utilizing. Um, somebody did mention that they are possibly using Ethereum. If that's the case, then I could just imagine the amount of money that they are losing. Ethereum as a network is extremely inefficient. I seen the other day, it was an NFT project that uh, it amounted for like over $25 million in gas fees just to make $8 million. So think about that logically. How is that scalable? How is that viable in terms of finance as well? This is also why I say like, you know, you got to list the pros and cons of being early into something like HBAR. I know that the price action sucks watching other assets go off. This is also why I say diversify your holdings. Um, you know, do I wish that HBAR was a dollar right now? 100%. Do I wish that it was $2? Yes. Do I wish that it was even higher? 100%. Obviously, I'm here to make money, but I also understand time in the market compared to, you know, time in the market, right? Like, just tr think about it like this. Think about trying to invest into HBAR right before it goes off. It's impossible. It's impossible to know that. But when you have the time in this market, you invest it your money. Remember, it's an investment. Some people, you know, it takes 10 years for them to get, you know, any sort of money back. Got to realize what Hedera is building. These DLTs are like no other technology. They're being adopted in. They're being, you know, they're being studied right now. I mean, we have college courses regarding digital assets and DLT technology because they see a massive potential future for these major technologies. So understand what you hold. Understand where things are headed. And uh, I really do hope that you guys are truly seeing the vision as well because, you know, when we are talking about a lot of the assets in this space that do have you know, $100 billion, $200 billion, all the way up to $1 trillion in market cap, you know, the future of some of these actual networks that do provide efficiencies and are creating standards within finance, DeFi, I mean, all the way to retail and, and so much more. Like, Hedera is in almost every market. And I've said this multiple times that Hedera is outpacing almost every other competition in the space. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely have a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, if you guys do want more content, my exit plans, trading indicators, stuff like that, go check out ncashofficial.com. But with that being said, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. It's been Nick. Peace out, guys.